There he is, y'all see? There he is. Let's see what we got here now. Oh my, 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 my. What about that? Crappie on a night crawler. Well, it don't surprise me. That's a good fish right there. I'm gonna put him in the bucket. Look how pretty that fish is. And pull. That looks like a black crappie. Let's net him. It's a good fish. Look here. They. That's a good crappie. There ain't nothing wrong with that. What about that? Ain't that something, folks? Look here. Just look here. That's what he hit. A half a night crawler. That's a good fish right there. I'm going to put him in the bucket. We're going to eat him. And I'm also going to go back there and, <laughs> and pitch again in the very same spot. That's a beautiful crappie right there. That's going to be some good flies, good eating. Let's put him in the bucket. Well, good morning, folks. Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. You know, springtime, well, is a very, very interesting time of the year. In fact, it's a very fascinating time of the year when it comes to fishing. And today I'm going to show y'all a method or what I would like to call a technique to catch crappie that not many people at all, if any, know about. It's an effective technique, especially when the water temperature gets anywhere from 54, 55 to 65 degrees, right there in that range. What happens is crappies start moving into the bank. They start spawning. They get very close to the bank, and because of spring rains, and we have a lot of them here in North Alabama, a lot of people don't know it, but crappie feed on worms a whole lot. Now, I'm going to explain to you why, because this is kindly not in the crappie world at all. It, this, is, this is just plumb out of the realm of crappie fishing as we know it. When we think about crappie, we think about a fish that primarily feeds on minnows, or here in the south, we refer to them as minners, but that's not so. Crappie will eat mayflies, they will eat nymphs that's hatching from the bottom of the lake, they will eat worms, uh, and of course, minnows of all different species. But, this time of the year, because of the spring rains that we have, there's a lot of worms, wigglers, red worms mainly, that wash into the lake. Okay, they start coming up towards the top of the ground because the ground is warming, the days are getting longer, and when they get to the surface up under leaves, all of a sudden here comes a big rain, it washes them into the lake. Now, this is a great time to use red worms or Walmart Canadian night crawlers. And how I like to go about this, once I locate the crappie and find out that they are up there and they and, and I find out how deep they are, I can absolutely tear them up, folks, especially this time of the year. Now what I use is a size six. That's a little size six light wire Eagle Claw hook, Aberdeen light wire hook, and two pound test line with a Palomar knot. That's to get the maximum strength I can out of two pound line. You never know, you might hook a bass, you might hook a, a catfish when you're fishing with night crawlers. Now, I like a light action rod, like this six and a half foot sow belly rod. This is a 1,000 size Daiwa. So this is a real wimpy outfit, ultralight. No weight, no anything, just a hook. And what I'll do, is take a pair of scissors and cut this night crawler 
in half. Just cut him in half like that. Then I'll hook him one time, folks. There's a reason for that to make him look natural. Right there on the tip end, right there in his nose. If he'll let me, one time, just like that, barely hooking. Now what I'll do is once I find out how deep the fish are, I'll let, estimate it and let that night crawler fall real slow to that level. And I'll keep it there by either holding my rod up a little bit or reeling. You would be surprised how many big crappie you'll catch. Hey, hope y'all enjoy the video. But what I'm going to do right here is there's a grass bed right there in front of us. Oh, the wind wants to blow me into it. But I caught him right, right there. And that's probably about hmm, five feet of water in front of that grass bed at the end of that grass. What had happened there, that bait was falling so slow. And that night crawler was moving, that crappie just eat it, eat it on the fall before it hit the bottom. Let's make another cast. Same grass bed, okay, we've caught a crappie and a bluegill from the same one. <laughs> and that's what's doing it. <clears throat> the water's cold. And that's what's triggering the strikes. That bait, that half a night crawler is just falling real slow. As it's falling, it's moving. That's deadly. There's a bite. It's moving this way. Look at this. Another crappie. Another crappie, folks, on the night crawler. Okay. Ain't that something? An eating size crappie too. Is that not something else? Let's flip him in. Oh, I don't like to do that with two pound line. I'm gonna put him in the bucket. This lake right here, Sylvania Lake, ain't that ain't that something? That's a black crappie. Golly, about ten inches long. That first one was probably 12 or 13 inches, but let's put this one in the bucket. Look at there. They, they're hitting night crawlers. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Don't that beat all y'all have ever seen before? Is that not the sport of fishing? I'm, I'm on a holler. I want to scream. I got to get this off. I'm burning up out here. I'm wanting to catch a fish. Woo. Let's pitch this night crawler. Right there. All right, y'all see how that's falling? Y'all see that? Let's do it again. See that? A natural fall hooked one time. What that does is it uh it attracts fish, especially in cold, cold water. So let's pitch back out there again. Right about there is where I caught that last crappie. And we got a grass bed, and I'm right at the end of it, and it's falling. Okay. There he is. Got another one, folks. I was fixing to move up, and that fish was on there. Another big crappie. Oh, it's a big crappie, too. Big crappie. I mean a big one, folks. Boy, that sow belly rod is perfect for this. Oh, sow belly! Look here, what a big old crappie. Oh, there's my night crawler, y'all see it. Yep, look at there, what a big crappie. Well, I'm wanting some bluegill and I'm catching crappie, but now Mama Sue loves crappie. 
I do too, but I love bluegill better. That's a big fish. My goodness. That is a big fish. So the moral of the story is, if you're wanting to catch crappie at Sylvania Lake, okay, just ease around the bank if you're in the boat. Look for weed beds. Throw to the outside edges of them with a half a night crawler with a size 6 eagle claw hook and let it fall real slow. And don't grab it just like this one right here did. Ain't that something? They... They... You know, folks, if I seem excited, well, it's because I am catching crappie on night crawlers. I mean, I've done it through the years just here and there and, and thought it was an accident. Is it an accident? Well, I don't know. I know one thing. That's a big old pretty black crappie right there. No doubt. And my big, big old full good fillets right there. Mama Sue Bob hosting our higher helms. That's my woman. She is going to enjoy this darn crappie. Because I'm going to put him in the bucket. We're mounting them up now, folks. We're mounting the fish up for Sue Bob hosting our helms. Woo. And let me add this. If you're fishing from the bank, just throw to the outside edge of the the grass and fish with a floater with half a night crawler. No weight. And this is a simple little hook. This is just a size six Aberdeen light wire panfish hook. That's all I'm using. Size six, light as a feather. So let's cut us another light a night crawler. <laughs> I'm excited, folks. And let's catch another. Old man Ricky can't do this kind of stuff. He's always worried the weather's got to be perfect for him. Now, today would be a perfect day for old man Ricky. All right, we're coming up on another weed bed right here. Let's fish it pretty hard. That's out in front of it about two feet. So I'm just letting it fall, letting the bait fall. I wish the wind would settle down just a little bit, but it is March. And March, you're going to have wind in March. So we've got crappie and big bluegill relating to this grass. That's the pattern. Looking for these little grass patches. And I've tried trees. And I've, I've been unsuccessful on these trees. But I can tell you one thing. These fish are scattered out. They're, they're not <laughs> a lot of them anywhere. That's just the way it's working. One here, one there. Very scattered. Water temperature, I'm sure when the water temperature gets up a few more degrees, say around 63 to 65 on top, I bet these fish will be on far, folks. There's fish. Golly. He was swimming with it. That's another crappie. Well... I'll be doggone. I want y'all to look how pretty that fish is out there in that clear water and a big crappie, too. Golly bump. Yeah, get you some night crawlers. I've done this one other time in Florida when I was a kid. Come on back in here. I caught, we caught them um, speckle perch. Look at here, what a crappie right here, folks. I mean, I was catching stump knockers, fishing stump um, cypress needs, which is nothing but the root system sticking out, and, and stump knockers were bedding, and they were all up around those cypress trees, and crappie were too, or speckled perch. And when I was a kid, I tore them up one evening with a cane pole will float. So crappie will eat night crawlers. We know that. Look at there. 
they okay they ain't nothing else that I know to do at this time folks but to catch another let's make another cast up there and I'm letting it just throw in slack in my line and letting it fall straight down and even in a situation like this the high vis line y'all can see how clear this water is I get a lot of questions about is high vis line a deterrent that does it keep crappie from biting in real clear water no crappie are not line shy at all the only reason why I use fluorocarbon leaders when I'm fishing with underspins and jigs when I'm using braid if, if I select a fish that way is because I have a lot of fluorocarbon line and I'm trying to use it up but high vis line is a plus especially if you're talking about fishing like this with no weight or with a jig for crappie or for bluegill even now bluegill's not line shy high vis line like this is just a plus because you can see the bite better i'm a line watcher right there where the bow is i'm looking for that i'm not trying to feel the fish i'm just looking for the bite even though it's sort of windy i can st i still recognize that thump i'm gonna throw let's make a cast right here behind us there's a high spot right here. What I mean by that, if y'all look, y'all see little mounds. See that light colored? Well, well really, those light colored little mounds that y'all are seeing are in about uh, six feet of water. That's how clear the water is. They're just little mounds. And, well, there's one behind me. And it seems like those crappie are kindly off to the side of them a little bit there's fish I be dang another crappie on a night crawler look at him down there in that clear water that water is so clear folks what I done is anchored where I caught that last one because the winds really but you don't want to use a trolling motor no more than you have to when you do especially in clear water clear shallow water of course this water ain't real shallow it's just ultra clear um, you, you'll spook more fish than you're going to catch you got to be real quiet step quiet look here ain't that something think about it just think about it just a little bit that's a black crappie Darn good in two. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about the bluegill. What's happening right here is I'm developing a pattern on these crappie, catching them on night crawlers. And, uh, heck, it's fascinating me so much that I'm developing a pattern. I'm knowing what to look for now. I know what to look for now to catch them. All right, folks, fishing was slow, but we've messed around there and caught some pretty good, pretty good fish right there. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's a, that's a good one. I'll hold up a couple of my biggest, biggest crappie right here. But these is really delicious, but crappie are too. But um, I'll <laughs> it is what it is, but I've been wanting to show this for a long time. So I'm going to explain something to you about crappie fishing. All right, folks, there's a couple of my biggest ones right there. Uh, they, there's a couple more in there about the same size. But anyway, today I had... But anyhow, today I had all kinds of stuff with me. I had underspins. I had... Um, some little one inch one and a half inch crappie baits i keep i keep them in here at all times 
um, and I could have caught a lot more crappie, no doubt. But I wanted to show y'all firsthand once you develop a pattern and you know what it is, you can continue catching fish. Now, today the pattern was weeds. The fish was right on the outside edge of the weeds, anywhere from two to three feet deep. So, by that little half a night crawler falling to that depth, when it was windy, a lot of times I'd hold my rod down after the cast, cast, and imagine that night crawler falling down. Okay, once it reached a depth that I knew the crappie were suspended on the outside edge of that of those weeds, then I would start fishing. If the wind grabbed the line and throwed a bow in it, that was fine. The bait was moving, so. I wanted to show y'all how opportunistic, is that how you say it, crappie are? They're opportunists, just like any other game fish. Um, so that was a good little pattern if all you had to use was night crawlers. Red worms would have worked too, folks. So um, keep that in mind. As much technology that we have now, we need to simplify things because we can get too smart to where common sense is no longer needed. And if you get too smart and overanalyze certain things, you will become confused very easily if things don't work out like it, like it needs to on paper. A lot of times instinct not overanalyzing the situation is the predatory instinct that we all have deep inside. Now, I don't know if I said that right, but I had to. We're all hunters uh, deep inside. God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel. I'm talking about dead gone. Woo! And to remember, go fishing when you can, fuck all this good.